Hey, man, welcome to our Wednesday evening service. We're glad to have you with us. We are so privileged to have our deacons preach, and they've been preaching for us now for about six months on Wednesday nights, doing a wonderful job, and we've enjoyed that, and their preaching touches my heart. Very timely. We appreciate them both working, studying, and they both have jobs outside the church, and that takes a lot of time. And I've, I've had people say, Preacher, what, what does it take you, like five minutes to write a sermon? Guys, it takes me hours and hours to get one together. You say, well, as long as you've done it. You see, <clears throat> I learned a long time ago, if I don't preach what God wants, it doesn't make any difference what I want. And these guys have done a great job as well, being timely, right on subject, right at the, I'm serious. So thank God for that. Thank God for this word. Look how much it's meant to us in these months past, and it will be more in the months of the future. I hope you're praying for your country. And I hope you're praying for each other. Pray for your church. Pray for our missionaries. A lot of them are struggling out there, guys. Ask God to do great things for those around you. Take on some extra burdens. And then, Lord, I know the Lord's going to bless when we remember that He's in charge and we're followers. That makes a big difference. So with that said, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, what a privilege to be able to be your child. And Lord, we, we, we're ever learning. We're ever learning just to follow your voice. Thank you for your word. What a difference it makes in our life. The things we know when we learn the word and hide it in our heart, they become, Lord, a, a bulwark for us, an, an absolute stable pillar to fall back upon. In the world we live in, it lacks that knowledge. Help us, Lord, not just to talk about the world, but to talk to the world. And to be careful when we mention anything to anybody that we somehow bring God into the conversation. That's what Jesus would have done. Bless us, Lord, tonight. Bless the message. And Lord, we ask that you convict our hearts always. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, Heritage Baptist Church. Good to be here with you this evening. Uh, if you would, go ahead and turn to John chapter 6 and we'll be reading in the story of, of the feeding of the 5,000, um, and, and we'll talk about that here shortly. So the title of the sermon is, But What Are They Among So Many? So a question for you. Have you ever had a task that just seems insurmountable, oh, like it would be just something that you couldn't do? Well, it can be very daunting. It can be scary. It can be a lot of things. Uh, but we're going to read here in chapter 6, and we're going to show you a truly impossible task if it wasn't for God. And uh, let's go ahead and look in chapter 6, start in verse 1. And after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he had did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now, I don't know how Philip exactly felt. Now, Philip's been with Jesus for, for a long time, uh, er, early on, and he's seen many miracles of Jesus. And maybe Philip might have thought, like, Oh, no, when he heard the question, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Because if you, if you saw, it was a multitude of people, a great company uh, coming up. And here's how I kind of see it. If you've ever been to a baseball game or a football game or a basketball game at a at a, either a college or professional uh, sporting event, and, and uh, you're leaving to go home, everybody else wants to get home, they want to beat the traffic out, and there's just people all around you, and you're kind of felt feel like a herd of cattle going around these turns and all that kind of stuff. Well, a great multitude of people, just a great crowd of people, and uh, are, are there, and they're with Jesus all the time. This, I'm going to give you a quick side note. I'm not going to spend too much time on this side note. But the side note is. Uh, sometimes I think we get a romantic vision of what it's like 
to, to serve Jesus with our lives, that things are going to be peaceful. Everything's going to go good. I'm going to do this. And it's just, everything's going to fall into place and all that. But it's not always the case. Things can get hectic. And if you just look at the life or imagine the life of Jesus with multitudes of people following him all the time, there's times we read about where, you know, the press around him is so great and people are bumping into him and all this kind of stuff. It can be hectic. And so that's just a side note right there is that sometimes serving the Lord can be a hectic thing, but I'm going to move on. And, and we're, we're talking about Philip here, or we're talking about where Jesus asked, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? So imagine you're there and you look out and you just see a, a crowd, a giant crowd of people, just a lot of people uh, uh, all around. And then Jesus says, where are we going to buy bread so all these people can eat? Well, that, that's a pretty daunting task. Now, now Philip saw the, the wine, the water turning the wine and all that kind of stuff. But it, so you may think that, oh, it, it just wouldn't, uh, he would have just said, oh, all Jesus has to do is, and, and there'll be bread enough to eat. But Jesus asked, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? That's a big task. And, and it's easy to look at things in retrospect. It's easy to look, especially the life of other people, and, and, and analyze that kind of stuff. But when we're in the moment, things are going on around us. Things are hectic. Things are moving. And we got to get things done. And we're asked right then, where are we going to buy bread that these people may eat? I, prob I probably would have had a big gulp. Ooh, that's, a, that's a, how are we going to possibly do this? Well, Jesus gives us test. God gives us test, not ever to embarrass us and belittle us, but to do some things, to grow us, to build us, to, to, to help us grow to be more like he is, to increase our faith and things like that. So God's, God tests us sometimes to show us what we're capable of doing and sometimes to show us where we may need to grow and, and, and to work and to have a greater prayer life for and different things. But when Jesus asked that question, it had to be a scary thing. So think about yourself, a task that you might have been given that you're just thinking, wow, that's a huge task. How am I going to get this done? And uh, one, one that comes to my mind, not, not a religious task, not a spiritual task, but just a earthly task, and, and by the way, these people were going to eat physically. But an earthly task is when uh, Eric and I pulled his engine from his RX-8, and we had to strip it down to just the block, and then we delivered the block to, to a guy who rebuilt it, and we put it back and all that. There was parts all over the garage. We had labels. We had all kinds of stuff. And it was a pretty daunting task. Now, I'm, I'm sure Dale Stanley could have done it in about 30 minutes, but for Eric and I, it was a pretty daunting task. So, uh, for, uh, but w once we got in it, we were in it, but it was a pretty scary thing. Well, that's nothing compared to how are you going to feed these thousands of people and, with the little money that you have or the little things that you have. So he says, what shall we buy bread that we may eat? And this he said to prove him. For he himself knew that he would, what he would do. Verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. So let's say you got 10 bucks and you got 5,000 people plus, or it's really more than 5,000 people with the women and children and all, but you got thousands of people to feed and you got 10 bucks and Jesus is asking you, where are we going to buy the bread? And you're thinking, I got 10 bucks. How am I going to feed? And he, he was even saying that's not enough, even if you just give them a little bit of a piece each kind of thing. So we know from 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So when we walk by sight instead of faith, we see the impossible task at hand. And when we see that, we're either going to quit or not even get started at all. Because when we see it with our eyes, 
we see this impossibility. And for man, it, it, it is impossible. But for God, it's not. So when we walk by sight, we just see the impossibility of the task and our own wisdom tells us, don't even get started with this. You can't do this. There's no way you can do it. You'll just be wasting your time. You'll be wasting your money if you get involved in this endeavor because it cannot be done. But when God leads us to do something, we can put our own wisdom aside and lean on his understanding. And it doesn't have to make sense to us. So when God tells us to do something, it could seem impossible when we look at it with our eyes. But when we look at it with faith, we know that God will see us through. It's easier said than done, though. But that's the thing that we, we should be working on as a Christian, is that our faith to grow. So, again, we're, we're get, let's get back into the story where Philip's basically saying, we got about 10 bucks. How are we going to buy all this bread for all these people? We don't even have enough for just to give everyone a little piece. And, and, and earthly speaking, that's true. It wouldn't make any sense, earthly speaking, it wouldn't make any sense with his wisdom or probably my wisdom at the time, if I was going to use my own wisdom to, to get 10 bucks out and see where can I go buy enough bread to feed these thousands of people. But the man who was asking was Jesus. So we need to put, when Jesus asks us to do something, we should put away our own knowledge, our own understanding, and put on our faith and trust Him that if He's given us the task to do it, He's going to see us through. Or what's going to, it's going to be accomplished the way He wants it to be accomplished when we earnestly do what He asks us to do by faith because He knows our limitations. He knows all things about us better than we know about ourselves. So, we, and He loves us. And the only good is going to come out of doing what God will ask you to do. So let, let, me, let me go on. So again, in verse 7, Philip answered, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here, a young man, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And, that, and that's the, the title of the sermon today, or, or the, the main verse for today is, but what are they among so many? It, it's when it, The task seems so immutable. You might even say about yourself, what am I, one person among so many needy people? What could I do? to help so many people when I'm just one person. But getting back to the story, here they're talking about five loaves of bread and two small fishes, and that would not be sufficient, earthly speaking, with earthly wisdom, to feed thousands of people. Earthly speaking, that would be impossible. But remembering the man who's asking the Lord Jesus Christ, all things are possible through God. They can be impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. So Jesus says in verse 10, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and... and and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up fragments that remain that nothing be lost. So just a food for thought. Jesus could have fed those people if that was the only objective was to feed those people any way that he wanted. He could have just had, poof, piece of bread and a, a fish is in everybody's hands just by him saying the word. They could have appeared there. He could have even said, be full, and it would have felt like everybody had already eaten. If Jesus wanted to do that, he could have done that. He could have done anything that he wanted to do. But he 
chose to use his disciples as part of the task. Now, when when I, I talk about my son sometimes, he, he just went off to college. I just got back a few days ago, um, taking him and his uh, stuff up to Salt Lake City or actually Sandy, Utah. And uh, But I remember when he was a young man, maybe six years old or so, um, I wanted to build a picnic table, and I did on our patio. It was just a wooden picnic, picnic table, no big deal. And I wanted him to help me. Now, if you know, if 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 you've ever put anything together or built something like that, a six-year-old boy doesn't really help. He makes it take longer. It takes actually longer when you get help like that. But I wanted him to be a part of it. I wanted to be able to say, "Here's the table that my son and I made," and I wanted him to be a part of that to be able to say he participated in that. Now. He was really too young. Now, when I ask him about it, he doesn't even remember uh, the, the picnic table or the building of the picnic table any, but he did remember about the engine in his car and all that. And uh, just, just a quick note on that, and I'm really trying to bring it to this message, is that that work we did with his engine, it probably took us a week or so uh, you know, to, to do. We're gonna have that memory our whole life, we already talk about it, how that was one of the better experiences that we had together. God could do things any way that he wants to. And if he includes you in, your, in the plan, consider it a blessing, consider it an honor that God would consider you in that. So here, he's considering his disciples to be a part of this plan. And he had his disciples to do, do certain things. And, and I'll, I'll read verse 11 one more time. It says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he did distribute it to his disciples. He didn't distribute it to the people himself. He distributed it to his disciples. And the disciples, uh, to them that were set down. Jesus used his disciples and they were a part of that. The feeding of 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes, they can say, I was there, and I was a part of that. I participated, and I watched the power of Christ work. So let, let, me, go on, let me go on a little bit. And it has to do, is you got to take the step of working, of doing things by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I, I say this over and over again, you can work your fingers to the bone, you can work like crazy round the clock, you can give all that you have, if you don't have faith in that, you're not pleasing God. It is impossible to please God without faith. So the first part is you take that step of faith. You trust God. That's what God's looking for, is for you to trust Him. And you can see Him move in your life. So thousands of people. The disciples, Jesus told them to sit the people down in rows. And, and then Jesus gave thanks. And he gave the uh, bread to the, distributed the bread to the disciples. Uh, now there was five loaves and twelve disciples. Twelve disciples. How was he going to dis- uh, do that? Well, he, he's pretty good at math, so I guess he got it figured out. He distributed that in fragments to the disciples, and they distributed it in, in, to to the people. And it just never stopped coming out of those baskets, and they were able to feed the whole multitude of people. That's a miracle. Jesus is always showing us the importance of faith. He's always trying to build us up and to grow us, to help us to be more like he is. So let's let's read on. Uh, we already read, but I'll read this again in verse 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain 
that nothing be lost. The disciples kind of uh, made back what they had and with interest were never going to outgive God. Now we're talking about physical things and all uh, right here, but if you if you think about it, when you give of yourself and you serve God, and, and a lot of times when we're serving God, we're serving people. When you give of yourself and do that, you end up with more. I'm not talking about just physical things. I'm talking about spiritual things. You end up with more. Now, I don't know, maybe it was a month or a month and a half ago, whatever it was, that I preached on the woman at the well. And one of the things that, that always strikes me out there is how quickly she went and told people about what happened to her. She had her testimony, and she went out there, and she gave it. And it was like that, that, that spring that comes up, it was just flowing out of her into everybody. Let me just read, read from John chapter 4, verse 14. I got it right here. It says, But whosoever drinketh of the water, this is Jesus speaking, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. A well of water springing up. Well, let's, let's put it another way. In John chapter 7, verse 38, uh, he's Jesus speaking, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you just picture this, Rivers flowing out like a giant fountain of water coming out of you. It's not your water. It's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit of God that, that just flows out. People see it. it it's, it's hard to contain a river of flowing water. That woman at the well had that water flowing out of her. And and I to be honest, well, I have that, but sometimes I don't feel that water just flowing out of me everywhere. But the water's there. I'm just not sharing it all the time. But that uh, that water should be flowing out of us like rivers of living water. And you might say, well, I've never had such an experience. I never had that feeling. I never had the need to share. Christ, I never had the need to tell people. I never see the need of, of, of people who are spiritually hungry and spiritually thirsty out there. I never see that stuff. I'm just going along with my life. Well, it doesn't seem to follow well what the description that God gives us about how we should have rivers of water flowing out of us. So, it, if you've never felt the need to tell anybody about Christ, you never felt the need to share with Christ, you haven't felt compassion on a lost world on, and so forth, I might at least get with God and talk to Him about that to see what's going on with my life, what's going on with my heart. What, how's our relationship, God? Is there something I'm missing? And, and, just, and just come to God and ask Him, is that right? the way that, I, that I'm living. Maybe you don't have that relation with Him at all, and you need to come to Him for salvation to begin with. But I, that's not for me to judge. But I would get with God and talk to God about that and ask Him, where are you with Him? Anyway, though, to, to move on, we're talking about the name of the, the sermon is, but what are they among so many? When you look at all those people, you have five loaves of bread, two fishes, and, and a multitude of people to feed, and you're like, what is this to so many? Well, we still have the same task here today because we have, if we look around us in this world, there's a multitude, a great multitude of people who are spiritually hungry and spiritually thirsty, and they're looking to be fed. Jesus always looks up with compassion and sees that need. If we can, with that same kind of compassion, look and see the need that's out there, 
we can make a difference. And you go, well, how could I make a difference? What am I among so many? Well, when you put your faith into Christ and you trust Him, and then you serve Him with your life, He'll do the multiplication. He'll do the multiplying. He'll do the work behind that. It's with His power. It's not your task to do without Him. It's your task to do. And Jesus will do all the multiplying. He'll do all that. And we can reach this world with the gospel. I think even religious leaders might at some times see this as an insurmountable task. And yeah, I don't know what the condition is going to be in the world exactly at the point where Christ calls his church out. That's not for us to worry about. We don't have to lean on our own understanding. We just have to trust Christ. We have the message to get out. We have to feed the spiritually starving and spiritually thirsty world with the gospel of Christ. What are you among so many? Well, if you know Christ as your Savior and Lord, you're a child of God, and you can serve Him with your life, and you can make the difference. We as a church can make the difference when we leave it to Christ to do the multiplication. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for what a great God that you are, Lord. And Lord, were things for us are impossible, Lord. They're not for you. Help us, Lord, not to see things with just our eyes, Lord, but to see them with faith. Where we can trust you, Lord, where things seem insurmountable, Lord, but we know that and you can do all things. And all we have to do is trust you and do our part. Five loaves of bread and two fishes, Lord. How are we going to feed the world with five loaves of bread and two fishes? All we have to do is trust you, Lord, and do our part. You distributed part to us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to distribute it to the rest of the world, Lord. Help us, Lord, I pray, to be faithful to you. Lord, please help us, Lord, to increase our faith and to trust you more. And Lord, I pray for our church, Lord, that you can help us, Lord, to, to stay united for the cause of Christ. And Lord, I pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.